Number 24. A 0.500 gram sample of potassium chloride, which is KCl, was added to 50.0 grams of water in a calorimeter that's shown in 5.12, which is this calorimeter right here. And now they're saying if the temperature decreases by 1.05 degrees Celsius, what is the approximate amount of heat involved in the dissolution of KCl? assuming that the specific heat of the resulting solution is 4.18 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. And then they ask, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Beautiful, lovely, splendid. <laughs> Let's do this. So a couple of things here. First thing they tell you is, you know, look at this calorimeter. Now this is called a simple calorimeter, right? Basically, whenever we're using this and not a bomb calorimeter, it's that uh, this calorimeter allows no heat to be lost. We assume that basically since the heat that's being lost in these types of calorimeters are very, 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 very low, we basically just assume that none, that none is happening at all. So we can do simpler math problems and calculations to find out our answers. Do I really need to use this or look at this to solve this problem? Absolutely not. So guess what? No one cares. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> let's just look at the numbers, right? So the, the thing that I, that catches my attention is that I'm now adding a ionic compound to water. If we've been on the playlist, right? Or if you've been working with me through this chapter, we've been seeing that it usually is a metal coming together with water. This is different. This is a ionic compound coming together with water. So it acts a little bit differently and, it, and it's actually a little bit easier. When you make a solution, and I believe that they did say a solution somewhere in here, here we go. When we're doing solution calorimetry, this just goes back to the original formula of this one, Q equals MS delta T. Now in this case, um, we wanna solve for the amount of heat. So I don't know what this Q is. So technically I should know the math, the math, the mass, the specific heat, and the change in the temp. Now here it is guys, with solutions, your mass is the combined amount of mass that you started with. So we're always just taking the mass of the solution. What's in the solution? Oh, well it's 0.5 grams of the KCL and 50.0 grams of water. I mean, they, they literally said the word added here, right? So I have to add these two amounts together. So it would be the 0 0.500 grams of the KCL plus the 50 grams of the water. That's what a solution is. So KCL, water, cool. They told us that the specific heat was acting basically as water. This is water specific heat. So I know this, 4.184, or actually no, they want us to use 4.18, which is fine with me. And then the delta T, which is the, cha the change in temp. They said that the temperature dropped or decreased by 1.05. This means that the final temp was lower than the initial temp by 1.05. If you have a drop in temperature, your delta T will start with a negative. So this would be negative 1.05 degrees Celsius. It kind of makes sense. If your final temp, right, it's TF minus TI, if your final temp was lower than your initial, of course you're gonna have a negative number. So that's the key thing here, guys. You have to put a negative in for this. So now let's figure out what this heat is. So it's gonna be the addition of those. So it's gonna be 50.5, right? Uh, 4.18 and then negative 1.05. Okay, let's see. So let me just clear this out. Okay, 50 times 4.18 times negative 1.05. And I get roughly, let's say, we'll do three sig figs. So 222, 222 joules. 
Now, when you're doing solution chemistry, the Q that you're always figuring out is the Q of the solution. This is different from the Q of the reaction. They're always going to ask you for the Q of the reaction. So all we have to do is just know that the Q of the solution is always going to equal the negative Q of the reaction. Basically, this is the whole idea of system versus surroundings, okay? The reaction is the system. The solution is the total surroundings. So we really want to find out what's going on with the system. So all you do is you always just change this uh, sign, okay? So the Q for the reaction would be a positive 222 joules. And that's the answer. So this one was tricky only because it's of the wording. They never want to find the Q of the solution. They always want to find the Q of the reaction. So it's just quick to just make that mental note and whatever number that you have, just, just swap the sign. Now is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Well, now you look at this. Since this is a positive value, that means that this is endothermic. Endothermic means that you are holding in your energy. You are absorbing energy. You are not releasing it. If this was a negative, the Q reaction being negative, that's exothermic. That means that you lost energy. So there you go. There's your two answers. All right. So endothermic totally. And the, the Q of the reaction was 222 joules. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel and Tell your classmates, tell your friends, all right? Thanks so much for that. I really do appreciate it. And let's keep working hard. I'll see you next lessons. Bye-bye.